Hey guys, so we're in the garage today because it's kind of wet and miserable outside, as most Decembers in uh, California are. But we're going to be working on the Aprilia over here, over here. We're going to be doing spacers for the engine cradle. So let's take a look at what I've got going on right now. Alright, so I got the case, case halves mounted in there uh, so I can mock up some things. I'm still waiting on some Yama Bond to glue the case halves together and I've got uh, new seals coming for, I believe these two, yeah. And I've got uh, crankshaft bearings uh, in the freezer, those are chilling out. I just got a, a new crankshaft puller from Tusk so I'll be able to uh, get this thing together as soon as I get the rest of the parts. But having it mocked in here is good so I can uh, create some spacers for this rear bar or this rear mounting cradle that I've kind of put together. So I fabbed, <laughs> fabbed these two plates on the sides and there's one on each side and then there's these stock bolts that go through here. I think, I think these were their stock mounting points for the engine, these two, if I remember correctly. But I just whipped up some plates, sandwiched them together. But the only thing is that there's a gap get all this stuff out of the way. There's a gap between the engine cases and the plate and then the bolts don't have spacers between them to kind of keep these plates from crushing in on each other. What I had in there originally because I couldn't find anything and I had to slap this thing together for the 24 hour race. This is just a, an aluminum pipe that's not nearly as big as it should be and that was kind of wedged in between the, the case and the plate. And uh, yeah, let's see if I can focus here. This deformed quite a bit and it actually left a sizable little notch in the case. So we're gonna run down to a metal supply shop, find something a little bit better suited for it. Uh, I took some uh, cardboard and cut out the dimensions that I need for those. Let me grab those. So this is the, ooh, focus. This is my spacer width this way between the plate and the engine case. Uh, it's a 30 millimeter diameter like that I have to play with um, for the, the outside diam diameter of the tube that I'm looking for. And then see if I can read my chicken scratch. It's a uh, 31 or 32 mil millimeters long and the, this bolt, which is going to run through it, is 11.8 millimeters in thickness. I just whipped out my really cheap you know, Chinese calipers to get these dimensions. They're not going to be absolutely perfect, but I can grind and kind of... I'll, I'll go on the big side and I'll grind it down until it fits. So we got this guy that's going to go in between the case and the plate right here to keep the case from shimmying back and forth or the plates from squeezing in on each other. So I got back from the metal supply shop and I got this bar that's I think about 27 to 30 millimeters in diameter. 28. All right, and we're gonna need 33 millimeters of length here. 33-ish, pretty close. And uh, I'm just gonna run this around and score into this. Um, I just use a paint pen to kind of give me a reference point. Because I don't have a bandsaw, I'm gonna end up using a cutoff wheel here. Not my preferred method for chopping through this stuff, but maybe one day I'll invest. Definitely got some safety goggles, some gloves, and some hearing protection, because this thing is loud.
Now begins the long, arduous tra task of drilling through this thing. And all I have is a hand drill, so add that to my uh, list of tools I need to buy for fabrication. We got the bandsaw, and we need a drill press. There's the gap that the spacer fits in, and I'm gonna throw that in right now, see how it lines up. From the outside, that's where this hole goes through, and it goes to the edge of the case. Right there between that case plate, or that case and the plate on the side. And that'll tie this whole unit together. And then when I pull all this out, I'm thinking about throwing a bar across here to keep this from crunching in. But so far it seems to be good. Might leave that for a later, later date. See how it does with just this bracket. Try and get a good shot of that. But now you can see there's a continuous run between the cases and the plates. That spacer takes up that little gap very nicely. So that should keep the engine all lined up, cradled in the back. We've got these two engine mounts up front, which are nice and sturdy. So I just hit these with another coat of enamel just to give them a little bit of a cleanup. The way these kind of assemble is something like this. And granted, they're not in the bike, so they don't have the bracket that's holding them apart. Okay. So fully assembled, the bracket looks something like this. Obviously the supports from the frame aren't here that you know kind of tie it all together. But this is the spacer that we made that goes between the cases and this plate. And then these are the two stock engine mounts that I've retained to kind of sandwich this all together. And this is a bracket for the rear of the exhaust, the, um, the expansion chamber. It's another mount for it. And so when this is all t sitting in the bike, it's all pretty sturdy. I'm still thinking about putting something in between these, but on the frame itself, not on the bracket, so that this I can take off and it's just easier to mount. But that'll probably come later. Next, we're going to be working on the radiator support. Well, making that spacer was a little bit more of an adventure than I bargained for, but we did get a new uh, drill press, which will come in handy later, especially when we're drilling all the bolts for um, like safety wiring. Next is going to be the radiator support, and I'm going to try and get some more videos out. It's been the holidays, so I've been a little busy doing family things, but... I would like to get this bike done as quickly as possible and take it out on the road just to kind of enjoy it. So thanks for hanging out with me in the garage and I'll see you on the next one.